All right. At least once a week, I'll get a DM from somebody pointing out a post or something, be like, oh, what, what do you think about this or, or whatever? And I uh, got one this morning and it was a reel about, um, basically the, the gist of it is you can prevent pelvic organ prolapse. And typically as all this stuff goes, and this is kind of understanding it from a medical perspective and then also under, understanding it from a marketing perspective, because um, usually when you see things like that, they're selling something. Um, is I can see it for face value medically, like is this an evidence-informed approach, or are they saying or doing things, taking Abby for a walk, um, that would entice you to click here to find out more, or you know, you know, if you want to find the the solution to this problem, our program will do that for you. So just to let you know where my my approach comes from. And so understanding that people are selling things, which is fine. I sell things too. Um, understanding that I read further and they're like, basically, okay, you can prevent pelvic organ prolapse if you do breathing and kind of do these other things. And it just, the gist of it is that all prolapse for the most part is preventable, which I, I think the, the data is not conclusive about that. I think if anything, prolapse is more complicated than we realize. I think there are genetic factors at play. There are collagen factors at play. There's how you use your muscles before. Um, there's what happens during delivery. So by telling a mom who is pregnant, so you're about to deliver, that if you do X, Y, and Z, if you take my program, I can promise for the most part that you are gonna prevent pelvic organ prolapse um, I, I don't think that's accurate because we just don't know. I think what's fair to say is if you take my program, um, we can address what we know how to address. And, and, you know, obviously, you know, whatever happens, happens, but you're at least educated. So I think there's a way to have that conversation. Um, but that's not what this said. And so I, I made a comment and I said, hey, you know, I just don't think that's the case. And they came back with, and I'm going to get this wrong. Well, then do you think injury, oh God, I might need to look at it. Let me look it up. It's injury-based diastasis recti. Can you prevent that? And my first reaction to that was WTF is that. I've never heard of that before. And I always like to cover my bases because I don't know everything and I'm not on top of all the research. And I'm like, you know what, let me just see what comes up and reached out to my sources to which they said, no, that's not a real thing. And then when I Google it, that's a term that this company is coining. There's no such thing as injury-based <laughs> diastasis recti. And so when I went on the website to see what the definition was, they're like, oh, if you, if you have poor intra-abdominal pressure, it can negatively affect the, the health of your collagen. No, <laughs> that's not a thing either. Um, said as a person with prolapse, said as a person with diastasis recti, um, my collagen is what my parents gave me, <laughs> not for nothing. Um, and I, again, like in an injury based, wasn't injured. I just had two kids and I appreciate mm -hmm. trying to make the, the parallel between, you know, rehabbing, making it re similar like rehabbing after postpartum it should be um kind of like rehabbing after an injury yeah i get that way i'm happy to have that conversation but like this is just not a thing and so the reason i bring this up is when you are trying to figure out what to do if you have somebody that says that my product is the solution we have no evidence for that you know again there's a lot of things we don't know and what you're looking for is from is for somebody to say, you know what, I don't really know, but we do know this. Um, and if we can say that, that's a good thing. Um, but for people to say, gosh, you know, I have the answer to everything and you can prevent all this stuff. It's kind of crap. And I hate being negative 
about stuff. And I, I hate being negative and being like, no, you know, I'm going to call BS on you. But here's the thing. Like when you tell somebody that something can be prevented and then they end up, they do what you ask and then you have that issue. What does that do from a fear perspective? What does that do from kind of all this perspective? And it's just, it's setting people up. And to some degree, that's what happened with me. I thought that I could prevent all these things because I was a pelvic floor PT and nothing bad would happen to me. And it's kind of, it screws with your head. And so that's why I, I, I don't, I don't want to be the social media police. I really don't. I don't, I don't have room on my plate for that, to be honest with you. Um, but I think we need to be critical consumers. The more stuff is out there and these big names, like understand that they are out there because they have great marketing and great budgets and great things like that. But what they might be telling you is a step beyond what actually is informed by the literature. And again, like love that we're getting the word out and educating and things like that. But if those programs are, are saying that they do more than they actually can do, you got to say something. And that's, I, I guess that's where I feel my role is at this point is like, I want to be able to support you in education and stuff like that, but you're overstepping where evidence is saying that we have capacity. Um, so, and again, I don't want to be a bitch about it. I really don't. It's I, I get, I, I don't need that in my day. Um, but if you are putting things out that you may not realize are fear mongering and scaring people, which is a marketing tactic. I'll be honest with you. If you are scared, you're going to buy something to fix that. Like, and that's why you have to understand it from both a medical perspective and a marketing perspective. These are businesses. Again, I'm a business too. I'm going to be the first one to tell you that, but I'm going to put evidence before that. So if you are regularly looking at what you're saying and regularly reflecting on the information you're putting out there and saying, Hey, does this stand up to evidence? Does this stand up to evidence? You reflect on what your messaging is to people. I'm on board. But if you're not doing that and you're heavier on the side of marketing and fear mongering and not taking responsibility for that and not stepping back and saying, you know what, we might have overstepped there. Our program can help. And I'm not saying that these programs are bad. That's the thing that really sucks is like they're not bad programs, but they're over promising and under delivering. And then you get people in your office that are like, well, I did all the right things and they said I could prevent this and I couldn't. And now I'm here and I don't know what else to do. So um, tell me your thoughts about that. If, and I would love to hear the stuff that you're seeing out there where you're just like mm, scratching your head a little bit and being like, can that really do that? And the chances is it's no, but I would love to see in the DMS, like what you guys were thinking as far as, um, kind of do things, can, does the, does the, <laughs> is the juice worth the squeeze? I guess that's what I'm asking. So have my DMS. Let me know. I'd love to hear about it.